Be sure to subscribe for your chance to win a custom leather playmat when we hit 2,500 subscribers. Hey everyone, here with the 10 most interesting cards for Popper. I'm not going to say any of these are slam dunks to see any type of constructed play in Popper, but they are cards that people are interested in, and we will go ahead and take a look at them, and let's have a little discussion about whether or not any of this will actually be good enough to see play. We'll start out with here with Malakar, Blood Priest. Two casting costs Cleric when it enters the battlefield. Each opponent loses a life, and you gain a life for each creature in your party. So usually this is going to do a one-point life swing for two. Uh, that can potentially be useful when you're flickering it in and out, though I don't see this being particularly useful in those type of decks. Uh, though never discount the utility of constantly getting repeated ETBs in Popper, as we've seen Ghostly Flicker, Ephemerate, and many others just constantly getting all sorts of triggers, though usually they're for drawing cards. Marauding Blight Priest happens to pair pretty nicely there. It's for three mana. We're going to get a 3-2, and whenever you gain life, each opponent loses a life. That's going to make all of your refuges, um, or not refuge, I forget what we actually call them, the, uh, the boon lands. I don't know. What do you guys call the pauper lands that when it enters the battlefield, you gain a life? Well, that turns this into something that pings your opponent, which is pretty nice, and... We will see. I mean, again, this is similarly could be brewed into some type of crazy thing where you're, you know, gaining life and pinging your opponent. Note that it's whenever you gain life, uh, they lose one life, not whenever you gain life, your opponent loses that much life. So incrementally, you know, increments of one are just as good as increments of 10. In this instance, if you gain any life, your opponent will lose one. And this is a cleric as well, though party is going to be pretty difficult to do anything with in Popper. It's an odd mechanic. I don't know where it's really going to work. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's got anywhere near the support it needs for Constructed. And in your sealed decks and drafts, it seems pretty difficult to pull off a full party in anything other than green or if you get that colorless guy that also counts as all party members. I guess changelings potentially impact that. Uh, Akum Hellhound. So we've got Step Links which, to my knowledge, doesn't see very much play, if any at all. Uh, this is, however, a much more aggressive color, so I could definitely see those two pairing up. We've got Terra Terramorphic Expanse and the other one. There's two lands uh, that can be used to fetch out a basic tapped, so while it's not as good as, say, a actual fetch land, you are getting two land drops in the same turn, making a one-mana, four-power creature a reality for a short while. So this is something that could actually see some play. I don't believe there's any shell that really uses it yet, but, I mean, that that's an interesting ability. I don't know if you'd also get extra support with landfall. The last time I saw this in Constructed would have been a Naya... Zoo deck in Legacy that ran Wild McCoddle and Step Links along with Knight of the Reliquary and uh, Tarmogoyfs, I believe, were in the mix as well. And it was just an aggressive deck with Kasali Pride Mage. It was mostly creatures and some Swords to Plowshares for opposing creatures, but for the most part, you were just getting after it, turning guys sideways. And this was a pretty dangerous way to start a game. I mean, if you were playing a fetch land on turn two, swinging for four. I mean, it was it was potentially over pretty quickly. So this one, I would not be shocked if people at least attempt to make it good. This The lower quality of the fetch lands in Popper is definitely a strike against it, but we will see. Chilling Trap, minus 4, minus 0 until end of turn. If you control a wizard, draw a card. You know, it's totally possible that this will end up being playable in some type of, like, Delver deck. It doesn't seem super likely. The card draw is pretty significant. Uh, now, we we have seen things like, uh, not Bitter Blossom, but there's the black one, some type of one black to do minus one, minus one, and draw a card if you control a fairy. Uh, this is minus four, minus O, which can potentially save you a lot of life, especially if you're getting after it in the air. So if your opponent's trying to attack you with smaller creatures on the ground, you can 
buy a whole bunch of time there, potentially create a disastrous blocking scenario, and end up drawing a card. But again, creature removal is not actually that difficult. You don't really need to jump through hoops to kill opposing creatures. I mean, we have access to things like Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Snuff Out. The bar is very high, so a lot of these cards, I think, are things that people may play in the short term, and it's reasonable to be aware of them, but you're probably not going to be having to play around them. This is a pretty significant printing here in Feed the Swarm. So I think, let me know if I'm wrong on this, I think this is the first time that Black has ever had targeted enchantment, enchantment removal. Now they did have a card back in maybe Amonkhet, which was making a opponent sacrifice an enchantment or a creature for like three mana. But at two mana, a sorcery and targeted enchantment removal... That is a very noteworthy printing. I don't know that black has to have that right now, but, you know, cards like Circle of Protection Black, if they do become fashionable, then this would be a very easy answer for a mono black deck like Devotion to not just get wrecked by a Circle of Protection Black. I mostly see Circle of Protection Red in the format, but historically black and red were the two most played ones as you were worried about things like Drain Life or, you know, Lightning Bolts, Fireball, anything that could put up the shields. And realistically, with those Circle of Protections, you don't actually have to invest the mana. Just its presence on the board thwarts your opponent from even playing those cards. So it's not like you're tying up your mana all the time. I mean, yeah, you're leaving some mana open, but hopefully you're playing during the end step to draw a bunch of cards as, you know, a general control strategy. So... Yeah, Feed the Swarm, I think, is a pretty significant printing. It bends the color pie, giving black the ability to deal with enchantments, but in a black way where they have to pay, uh, they lose life equal to the permanence converted mana cost. So one of those greatness at any cost type situations, but black bleeding into the other colors in the color pie with the ability to handle enchantments with a targeted card which is, I believe, something that they've avoided doing for the last almost 30 years that Magic has been around. Scale the Heights is an interesting card. I don't really think it's going to see play, but it's it's the front half of Euro, practically. So you're going to draw a card, play a land, gain two life, and instead of setting up a Euro coming out of the graveyard later, you're actually going to put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature. So this is an awful lot packed onto a single card, and if there's a deck that wants all of these effects, this does it. Like, this does an awful lot. Uh, getting that extra land drop could be significant. Um, I can't think of anything right now that would be, like, super thrilled to play this. Uh, it doesn't really feel like it's going to be good enough for, say, Tron to get the extra land. If they really wanted that, they do have Explore, which I haven't seen people playing. So... I don't know, the two life and the draw card, additional land, all of that is just very interesting. And I couldn't not mention this one as it is kind of like a popper Euro. Royal Eruption, sorcery speed on this one definitely stops it from being just insane. If this was a instant speed card, it'd be, it'd be amazing. It would be so, so good at instant speed. So they balance it out by making it a sorcery. One in the red, you're going to do three damage to any target. And if it was kicked, it can deal five damage instead. I could see some Tron decks wanting to actually run this. Uh, I mean, it's seven mana to do five damage, which is a lot. I mean, that's that's a lot of mana. But in Tron, that's just three lands. So you're having four of your lands to just hit someone in the face. But you also have access to cheap removal cheap-ish removal in the early early stages. So while I don't think it will see play, I could definitely see a world where this is actually a way that Tron is looking to finish the game with just some direct damage. I think, you know, there's probably more of an argument for like Fireball or, you know, cards that can actually do the full 20 if the game goes on long enough, but it's an interesting one. Spare Supplies, again, Nothing specific that I can see this being used with right now. Uh, Tron, with that ghostly flicker plan, uh, along with some of the other decks out there, do have the ability to flicker out artifacts, and generally they're wanting to draw cards when that happens. 
The upside on this one is later on you can cash it out to draw yet another card. And yeah, I think it's probably not an embarrassing card to sleeve up. I'll say that. This may actually be playable immediately in Popper in some decks that are already running similar effects. Now, note that probably the decks that make the best use of that are like the Atog strategies that have um, Icker. You can tell how much prep I do for these videos. There's a two casting costs card with Icker in its name that lets you draw a card when it enters the battlefield and when it dies. And uh, this one is going to give you another way of getting that extra card instead of just having to have a sack outlet you can just pay two to sack it so decks that have the ability to just automatically sack their artifacts to things like atog do not need this uh, but perhaps in some type of control ish strategy that has the flicker element if you don't have a mull drifter to be flicking or you know if mull drifter ever finally gets the axe uh, then this would this would do cleansing wildfire it's a really interesting card. Now, I think we had this at three mana before, if I remember correctly, from Modern Horizons. I believe there's a three mana card that does, like, pretty much the same thing. Might be at an instant speed, like Geomancer is something, Gambit. Um, I don't know. This, this is going to be really, really good against decks that have no basic lands but i don't really think that's going to be the case in popper practically ever even tron decks tend to have a handful of basics um or at least one so it doesn't feel great when you just cash out one land for another if it is a tron piece it feels fine uh, but really where you want to be is actually destroying a land and drawing a card without them being able to search. And I can't think of anything in Popper that will stop them from searching. Let me know if there is a piece that'll work. I know there's a bunch of cards at rare uh, that can screw with your opponent's searching, but I don't think there's actually anything in common that's going to make this viable. So it's a card to keep an eye on. If Tron decks ever get too greedy and stop running basics, then red decks are going to rejoice in playing four of these in their sideboard and uh, being able to just decimate their opponent's mana base while drawing cards all for only two mana. Uh, but against anything that has basics, you know, it's really... That Ghost Quarter effect has not proven to be phenomenal for the most part. It's, it's no wasteland. And uh, here, you know, you're drawing cards, so it's, I would say, better than Ghost Quarter... But unless they've got zero basics, it's it's a big ask. And Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort, I think this might be the best card for Popper, which maybe I just don't play Popper enough, but I do play it a decent bit, and I feel like this is the type of card that could give some combo decks the ability to just kill on the turn that they start comboing off. So I'm talking about things like Elves, where you're potentially able to draw your whole, like just massive amounts of cards and use things like Nettle Sentinel with Birch Lore Ranger to just shotgun out tons and tons of 1-1s and have creatures that are going to be growing uh, thanks to Lissalana Huntmaster and uh, just, you know, plus one, plus one counters on your Elves with every ETB just go going wide and tall and then actually finding the Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort, casting it and winning on that turn. So there are times where that deck plays a instant or sorcery that will allow you to just dome your opponent. And this is kind of in that realm, I would say. So there's a variety of options that you can choose at three mana already in the format where you can just deal damage equal to the number of elves you can, uh, creatures you control or... Your opponent loses X life for each creature you control or, you know, just a variety of options. They already exist. And they are occasionally played. This one, I don't know, could end up being the best of them. I mean, creatures you control having haste is something that can actually be relevant if you draw it. Like, bringing in that single silver bullet that can just kill your opponent if they do happen to stabilize with, like, infinite moments pieces is an issue... And this one doesn't actually address the moments piece lock. So, I don't know. I mean, it, it lets you kill, but not through everything. So, kind of talked myself out of that with moments piece. I'm not going to lie. 
but this does let you kill when you're gold fishing, which is part of the reason I made the video is to sort out my thoughts. So this could be a consideration. We will see. Let me know what you think about it. And I look forward to getting some popper events going soon through the webcam. We've been doing legacy. It's been going really well. So let me know if you want us to be running a popper event through our discord uh, so we can be giving away some awesome prizes and uh, connecting popper players from all over the place. We, we've got people playing from California, Texas, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut. I mean, it's really cool to see the community coming together for Legacy. So maybe it's time to get popper going as well. Let me know what you guys think. That is all for this one, but don't worry. There is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.